libraries, geometries, and CAD files. Geometries are basically CAD files which are copied into the station. Now, usually, I work with ACES uh, formats and the .set files. And um, libraries are objects which are used as links to the respective library file. So uh, if we um, uh, want to share anything, we have to include this the data which are related to the links. So we can generate a pack and go file, which actually collect everything that needs to be included in a shared station. And uh, if we just have the links, uh, it's just a link that relates to anything within the the uh, storage that I'm working with, usually within my own computer or maybe within the network uh, I'm uh, connected to. Uh, but if I then just share that, uh, there is no information, so to say. So um, I need to create and populate it with all the data. So workflow, general point of view is to create geometries, we have a library, we have a geometry which we might want to model, replace geometries and add frames. We populate the system with robot or robots, tools, work objects, and so on. We create targets and paths and any other instruction which is necessary. We check target orientation, check reachability. Then we synchronize the program. I would recommend to do that as early as possible just to check that things are working as intended to the virtual controller or the rapid environment, uh, which creates a rapid code. Do any necessary text-based editing. Uh, usually there is something that needs to be done in this, uh, which is easy to do in the text-based editing. And then synchronize back to the station after editing. Continue work around this. Finally, there are some issues related to check for collisions, check for joint limits, check for configurations of the robot and so forth, that everything seems to work as intended. Usually so this is an iterative process. And also, there's also a need to check for the functionality of the program itself. So at some time during programming, we want to do some things in a better way to generate some procedures, which include some common uh, routines in, in the whole workflow, try out that, make things more neat, so to say, and then test program and move along paths. So a common operation in Robot Studio is to create a workflow. We always do that, a, a work object. We always do that for all programs. That is to define a frame at the post of the work object. In this case, it is located here at the left lower left corner of the bottom plate in this case that could be seen as the origin of a jig or a fixture or something like that now work objects are frames in a way and from a general point of view there are lots of frames within robot studio so a task has a zero frame or an origin which relates to the virtual controller. And then if we only have one robot, there is a base frame that relates to the robot base. And these are the same if it's only a one robot station. If we have more than one robot, of course, uh, one robot can have the base frame as the task frame, but the other robot must have a base frame which is different. That's quite obvious. Then we have the work object frames, we have tool frames, and we can even have more frames, so to say. If we have a robot, we can do jogging, or if we have a tool, we can do jogging. 
that means moving the robot by jogging the joints or the TCB of the robot. In the same way, we can jog motions of a tool, for example, or a positioner, which might have one, two, or more axes to move. Targets are created using a teach function or a dialog box which defines the coordinates meaning usually x y z and an orientation around around uh, the x y z axis and then we can do some modification of the target using mod or modify instruction in relation to the velocity and so forth And paths are populated with targets. So without a path, we cannot move the robot. So we need to do that to actually move around the robot. TCP. The targets, they can be defined by a teaching function using the post of the robot, it is at the moment, and the current configuration or values. If we have used values, we need to verify the configuration, usually one out of four or more possible configurations at a certain time. Usually we just validate the path using auto configuration. So when we create the path, it is empty from beginning and then we add targets to the path by using just drag and drop. We select targets, and just drag them to the path we want to populate. We can create the path from a curve, we can set the Robot axis configuration, and we can do a reversing path, rotating, translating, using offset, and so forth. And then we can check if the robot can reach things, if it can go through the path using a certain configuration. We can move from one target to another one. We can show the robot at different targets or just the tool to see how the orientation looks like and uh, check the um, interpolation mode for example if we have a move joint or move linear usually if we have a non-working target usually if we move on one target to the other one using a move linear it might be a problem with the configurations and in those cases we can either check the configuration or we can check i would recommend to go to move joint if that is possible. If we just move in space as a via pos position, that is the proper way to do change to move J. Now, the robot axis configuration. So usually there's one more than one solution to reach a target. And configuration can be saved with the target position that is done when we have actually learned the robot how to move to that position automatically, more or less. And um, it look, can look like this one. So for this, for this um, two center point, we can have this configuration or this configuration or this configuration. So they're all different and they are more fit for the purpose, so to say. But of course, the system doesn't know which should be used so we have to learn the system which to use there are some issues related to interpolation as well and uh, some different ways to do especially for uh, orientation so-called so linear interpolation or absolute interpolation which works in a bit different ways usually um, in most cases it's not a big issue but in some cases it might be an issue if the orientation is needs to be controlled in a specific way for a certain process. So creating the rapid code. All programs for the robot is written in the language rapid. And that is generated automatically through a synchronization procedure. And the general process is, as I mentioned, create the station synchronize to the rap to, to the virtual controller and generate the rapid code edit as necessary and after that synchronize back to the station which will update the station with whatever we edited 
and then we can validate using simulation and uh, go back and forth, so to say, until we are satisfied. There are some basic instructions that are valid in, in Rapid. We can, for example, assign a value to data, like yval equals 50.5, for example. So it is written in this way, semicolon uh, and, and uh, equals, and then uh, ending with a semicolon. Weight is quite important, action statement. Wait time, for example, wait until, wait digital input, wait digital output, or a comment, just an exclamation mark. This is a comment on one instruction line. And move L is instruction is quite extremely common, I would say. That is the move linear. Uh, it moves to a certain point with a certain speed and the zone and uh, which actually tells how close it will move to that point and a certain tool so move l the point is p10 the velocity is thousand millimeter per second for the tool which is two zero and phi means a full stop and uh, those are defined in this way as a constant drop target P10 equals and so on, a lot of data. V is speed in millimeter per second, fine, is smooth and argument, as I mentioned. So, if we would like to um, move over to the next target point, we can have uh, another value than fine. We can have a Z50, for example, that indicates that the, uh, there is a rounding factor. So, it starts moving to the other one. When it comes 50 millimeters to the target 50, uh, P10, and then moves to P20. If we have Z10, it means that 10 millimeter away from P10, it will start to move over to P20. 